Hello guys, how you doing? This is another blast from the past, another memory I thought I'd share with you guys. And uh, when I was working with Xi'an, he would always, we'd come up with different openings. Meaning, you know, in your falling leaf you guys go like this, you go like this, you bring it down. Some would start like this, some would start like this, and, and then uh, we would create. And when I was doing a motion, he would say, and then, and then, and then, and then. Anyways, let's get back to the side. Um, an experience I once had with three sides. And one day we were in school and we are talking about the beach. Uh, Fred says, let's go to the beach, let's go catch some fish. Sheon says, yes. This was about the same time that um, Master Triplet and Jim Hartley were learning the two-man side set. So we go to the beach, and Sheon brings his flamenco guitar. He's playing this flamenco music. Remember I told you that music was a very integral part of his creation of kata? It really is, because um, when he would hear music, he was, he was able to go to that and create and move with it. So we're at the beach. We're now at the beach. He gets done playing his guitar. He says, where are the size? I said, they're in the van. He says, go get them. So I'm carrying like two sets of size. He goes, give me a sigh. So I hand it to him. He's walking. He gets the sigh. He whips it around his head. And boom! Goes right into the sand into like a piece of wood. He says, give me another sigh. He gets the sigh. He does a block with it. He comes this way. Wings it around. Does a circle eight. Wham! Throws it into another piece. And he's doing all these, he's doing all these motions like... Uh, even though he didn't have a sigh in his hand, the, the, the sigh would be in the foot, and then you would see him like he would like block, choke, counter, or he'd say, give me another sigh, he'd, he'd block, he'd hit the other arm, he'd come over the top and poke to the throat. Um, he would block one way with the sigh, bring it around this way with the hooking end, bringing the elbow down, and then coming over and piercing. He brought the sigh this way into the guy's chest, pierced. And he's going through all these motions as I'm walking with him. And he's telling me, yeah, you got to carry three sides. you got to stop the man in his tracks, and then you have to attack him. And I was just like, I was looking at him like, wow, that's, that's really cool. You know? And uh, anyways, he would throw a side, would stick it in a Coke can. He'd throw another side, would stick in this wood, stick in that paper, stick in that wood. And he's throwing them long, long and short and short and piercing. And then if he didn't have the sigh, he would follow up with hands. So after we're done, we go back, we're leaving. Um, Fred dropped us off at the school. Sean didn't have a car, and I drove him home. And on our way home, uh, we passed by a high school over in Los Feliz, and he says, pull the car over. He says, bring a couple of those sides. I said, okay. So he said, get, the, get those garbage cans, stack one on top of the other. So he moves back so many feet away from the garbage cans, and he gets a sigh. He says, okay, your turn. I said, and I look at him, he goes, yeah, throw it, make it stick. I said, okay, and we're, you know, pretty far away from the garbage can. And he, I throw it, and it's stuck, and he went, boom, just like a dart. He got it, boom, he made his stick. And we're doing that back and forth a couple of times. And then he says, okay, now we're going we're gonna to try the different throw. And he... He got it and he whipped it and the side was traveling like this in the air, right? And it hit the garbage can and instead of it sticking, it exploded it. I mean, it just ripped, ripped a hole right through it. It made a huge, really loud noise. You could see people on the sidewalk and people were driving by with their car real slow. He looks at me and goes, oh, we better go now. <laughs> so I said, okay. Uh, he goes, go get the size. So I get the size, I put him in the car, and uh, I drive him home. He goes, oh, so how'd you like that? I said, oh, that was, that was great, Shion. I go, that, that was really something else. He goes, he, he, he says, oh, yeah, we got, we got a lot of psi forms. And the really cool thing about it was um, he had a very unconventional approach to teaching weaponry as opposed to what you learn today in the Filipino arts or the Japanese arts or the Chinese arts. Um, 
he would show a motion like with two side, a short range, and then pretty soon that would be a long, and then he'd flip it and come over here. And what he was doing was he was teaching you all the different striking positions and blocking and, and parrying with the Psy. And it was for you to understand what those motions were and break them down. <clears throat> because I remember asking him, I was saying, uh, I would say, Shion, how do you how do you use that? And he would say, uh, what do you mean how do you use that? He goes, I just, I just showed you the motion. I go, yeah, but I mean, how would I work that? And he goes, well, he used to tell me, <laughs> you want me to think for you too? And I looked at him. He says, okay, let's, let's go through it again. And he did a motion. This is how it kind of started. Um, he did a motion, we would do it, these, these different parries. And he'd say, okay, well look, here's the block, here's the block strike. Okay, now you figure the rest out. So I would go through it, he'd go, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Okay, here's the block up above, here's this, here's that angle, yeah, yeah, next, next. And it became really interesting how his thinking pattern was. That's why when, when he would do a, a, a motion to the right, the attack to the left was completely different. Then when he would come back and block and do a double strike, hook, come over to the collarbone, bring him down, once again it was completely different because in combat you're never going to face the same attack twice. And that was his, his, his thinking, his, his way of projecting it through his forms and his hand motions. <clears throat> Anyways, that's enough for today. I thought I'd just share this memory with you and um, keep training. And we're going to bring the best out that we can of Tay. Master Larry and I are, are trying to bring back the art of what once was and try to show the best of what we can of what Okinawa Tay is. That's really our main objective. Anyways, I hope you guys appreciate that and I hope you're doing well. Keep training, man. You know, seek that knowledge. Forget the belt and the scrambled eggs and the, on the belt pieces of paper you know get that rhythm get get that vibe get that feeling make it become you you know because we can't relive the past I'm, I'm sharing a memory with you but what's more important is you in the future because you are the future of the art all the best guys